So now I'm going to review a SmackDown from the Attitude Era, specifically the first ever SmackDown, which is in April 29, 1999. Now, let's, I'm not going to review two of the matches. I'm particular because of the new YouTube design. Now, I did praise it for going back to some of YouTube's roots. However, I don't like the counterintuitive nature of it, how things require more clicking, and some of the videos just, they don't even load up. They don't even have that little spiral thing, they just see a black screen that you can't interact with in any way. If you have to even call it a screen, it's not even that. It's just like this black little block. And I can't interact with it in any way. So, that's kind of lame. I don't really enjoy that aspect of it. Hold on. However, I don't want to waste headphones lifespan by using it too much. So, I take it out during the videos since, well, why not? Okay. Uh, one of the interesting things I've noticed about this SmackDown is that Jim Cornette's on commentary, which I didn't know he was in commentary for SmackDown. That's really cool. And hold on. Let's see. First thing that we see is a recap of what happened at the Raw before this SmackDown, which is basically related to Undertaker and the Ministry and how he kind of kidnapped Stephanie McMahon, try to make her into his, uh, I don't know, some type of sacrificial wife thing, an unholy marriage, but then Stone Cold stopped it. And he, I guess it was like Stone Cold being face and saving Stephanie McMahon. So in this SmackDown, you get to see Vince throw out this face turn. He's face now. So he just wants to say, yeah, I am an asshole. I was an asshole for the past few years. But that's all going to change now. I'm going to be a good guy now. I got to thank Stone Cold. I got to thank... All these people that like helped him out at the time, and his daughter, the one that was being kid kidnapped by an Undertaker, and almost married in an unholy manner to the Undertaker, like some type of satanic shit. She was all like, "Fuck the Undertaker," and shit, trying to be daddy's little girl. And I like the contrast of her personality here versus what it eventually became. Where she started to become more of a spoiled brat instead of this nice daughter thing. Which, I, I like how characters change over time. They become more layered and shit. And she does become face again during like late 2002, 2003. So, there is that dynamic. Of course, eventually the corporation comes which is run by Shane McMahon, who is Vince's son. And Shane is basically like cutting both of their asses, saying he's the boss now. What are you guys doing here? Man, get the fuck out. Uh, sense of security. And, yeah, they have, to, they have to go. They have to leave. And he books a match between Austin and The Rock versus Triple H versus Undertaker. And... Basically, it's uh, this kind of thing where they never teamed up before and they really dislike each other. So this is kind of like putting Ebony and Ivory together. It'd be like putting Hogan and Andre together. Or like even worse, like Hogan and perhaps Dino. We know that wouldn't fucking work. So next we got... First match we got is a uh, blue bait laser, which is uh, Owen Hart, and you know this is his last year of living. He dies less than half a year after this, so 
yeah, that's kind of like a negative thing to bring up. But this episode of SmackDown kind of makes me think about how things get really twisted up in a few months from here. So we got the Blue Vazor versus Val Venus. And Blue Vazor is like Owen Hart's moral character. He's like a... He's a return to the 80s where everyone was like, drink your milk, eat your vitamins, say your prayers and shit. So he's sort of like trying to be that kind of heel where he's the moral heel. Kind of like Damian Sandal or CM Punk when he was in Straight Edge Society. And he's going up against Val Venus who's the, well he's kind of like, he's not a pimp, but he is a sex addict of a way. Not like a... Not like Mark Henry at this time, but in a way that he's supposed to be like a porn star. He walks around in a towel. His theme song has every trumpet lick. It sounds very pornographic, and he's always making sexual references. So, uh, I mean, his catchphrase is "Hello, ladies." I mean, it's kind of what he's going for. And so, originally, this was supposed to be. Jeff Jarrett, no, originally it was supposed to be Owen versus Val Venus, but then it was going to be Jeff Jarrett versus Val Venus, because Jeff Jarrett had some beef with Val, because of his girl, well, his sort of girl, which was Deborah, and of course, there's that kind of conflict which is added on to this. They get their match, uh, it's a quick match, uh, basically... Val gets screwed and shit. That's kind of what happens. Next, we got Big Sh Big Show versus Tess. And with this one, it's a very quick victory, which I kind of find surprising. But essentially, Tess is out of the corporation, and he gets into a match with Show. And he loses very quickly, and he looks good in the beginning up against Big Show, but then... Nah, it's futile. He loses. He gets his ass beat. And that's that. Next, we got D'Lo Brown versus Jaraz. And I kind of consider this a really... You don't notice it if you were there back then, but looking at it at hindsight, this is kind of weird. Because many months, many moons later, they face off again. And D'Lo Brown botches and turns, draws into a paraplegic, and from a botched power bomb, which isn't completely his fault. But yeah, he eventually becomes paralyzed, and his wrestling career was over. And draws, draws did kind of have a future. I mean, he was. He had a good history with, like, the other sports he was in, and he came over here. He was a little over. I think he's over. And it's too bad what fucking happened, because this was the late 90s, and look at where we are right now. It's kind of sad in a way. Okay. And this is one before the main event. Because I'm skipping the last two because of YouTube being a bitch. Uh, the Tag Team Champions, X-Pac and Kane versus the New Age Outlaws. Now, this means that it's basically one branch of DX versus the other. DX isn't just uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels. It was also X-Pac and Kane and New Age Outlaws. So there's a lot of tag teams within X uh, DX. So, DX is a kind of cool in that way. However, the match itself, I know I've dissed X-Pac in the past a lot, and there's certain things about his character that I find annoying, and it kind of makes me want to punch him in the face. However, his entrance steam and that kind of shit, basically his tag team with Kane, that's good. That's interesting. That's I actually like that. And you already know I like the New Age Outlaws. So 
there you go. I really enjoyed this shit. I didn't get to see Ken Shamrock versus Bradshaw, which pisses me off. Quite frankly, I think that those two... Those two are my favorites in terms of Kim Shamrock being badass because he has a UFC background and JBL. He he always has like those badass moments where I guess he can be more bloody, more hectic and chaotic than most people, even now in the Attitude Era. I mean, especially like in 2004, where uh, 2005, where his matches were like the bloodiest shits I ever saw. <sighs> I mean, literally, his matches like the ring is covered in blood. So these two are badasses in their own ways. They might not be the guys that have that everything they touch is gold. They do have their flaring weaknesses with Ken Shamrock not having enough. Mike skills or that kind of charisma and Bradshaw, uh, his in ring work needs a little polishing, and things like that. But they're both, they both have their accolades. Okay, I didn't get to see Mankind versus the Big Boss Man, which kind of sucks. His Big Boss Man, back when Big Show versus Test earlier on that SmackDown, he was doing some badass shit. His gimmick is cool and all. I like that kind of people from the corporation. I don't get to appreciate his character that much. And Mankind, Mick Foley, everything Mick Foley touches is gold in some way, shape, or form. So, this is something I wish I could see. But I probably won't until YouTube resolves this little issue. Next, we got the main event, which is... Of course, Stone Cold and The Rock versus Undertaker and Triple H. It's funny to see that these are tag teams of guys that eventually face three times at WrestleMania. Think about that. Stone Cold and The Rock face three times at WrestleMania. Undertaker and Triple H face three times at WrestleMania. So it's kind of like that. Their match in itself is... A main attraction or special attraction. There's they're essentially Matt WrestleMania quality guys, all four of them. So you put them together, and it's definitely a good match. And the thing is, this is the Attitude Era. This is '90s trash TV, so the ending becomes a little chaotic. This time, reaching WCW proportions, except with a little subtlety in terms of it ending with. A bunch of those corporation and ministry guys, like, all, like, jumping them in the end. Where are some DX guys? I don't know. And ultimately leads to Vince saving Stone Cold by taking that chair shot he was about to receive from The Undertaker. So, in the end, it was a good SmackDown. Great first edition. I loved having Jim Cornette there. And I think that he works very well with Michael Cole. So... Those are just my thoughts. That's my review. Yeah.